Yesterday, we had nine yards of soil delivered. It took us hours to spread it out and we didn't finish until 10 p.m. Because it was getting so late, we rushed to spread out every mound of soil and ended up not doing a good job on the front lawn. It would have taken us weeks without the guy we hired. Normally, the soil company just dumps it in the driveway. But this guy, recommended by my sister, brought it to the backyard with a wheelbarrow and made small mounds of soil around the yard, which made it easier for us. It took him close to two hours to do it, but it was worth it. Due to vol damage over the years, it left the lawn uneven, and it's also time to top it with additional soil. Some areas received more soil than others. I'll finish cleaning up the yard and garden, then I'll spread grass seeds on top so I don't have to keep on walking on the newly seeded lawn. It is now the first week of May. Trees, shrubs, and perennials are waking up from their dormancy. New leaves are starting to emerge from this limelight hydrangea. This is one of the many hydrangeas in my garden. Limelight hydra hydrangeas bloom from late summer to late fall. This burgundy smoke bush suffered vol damage during the winter. They nod on this poor smoke bush's bark. Smoke bush leaves are typically oval shaped and can be green, purple, or burgundy, depending on the variety. In the summer, it produces large clusters of tiny flowers that you might not even notice. These flowers are surrounded by fluffy, cloud-like structures that resemble puffs of smoke, which is why it's called smoke bush. This summer sweet plant hasn't grown any leaves yet, but it will soon. It's known for its sweet and spicy smelling flowers, which bloom from mid to late summer on both new and old wood. This anise hyssop, also known as agastache, is starting to emerge from the ground. Its leaves have a pleasant anise-like fragrance when crushed. Both the leaves and flowers of anise hyssop are edible and have a sweet licorice-like flavor. Here's another one. There are a couple of new growths on this Wajella. Here's one. And here's the less obvious one. Wajella blooms in late spring to early summer on both new and old wood, but it depends on the variety. This is Pinky Promise, a pink snowberry its flowers bloom from late spring to early summer, followed by small light pink berries that last from late summer to winter. This is an automatic sprinkler that waters the lawn. It used to be buried underground, but I dug it up when I turned this part into a flower garden. I might change this one to a drip system to water this section of the garden, we marked all the sprinklers with orange flags just in case the sprinkler heads get buried during the soil delivery. This is one of my many delphiniums. More hydrangea with new leaves. This is one of my two Saskatoon berries. The berries look like blueberries. Some people say they taste like a mix of blueberries, almonds, and cherries with a hint of vanilla. Honestly, I haven't tried any yet, so I can't say for sure. They're rich in antioxidants, fiber, and various vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C, manganese, and iron. This is a lemon lace elderberry. It blooms with white flowers in early spring and its leaves start yellow with red edges, 
turning chartreuse as they mature. This is a perennial plant called penstemon. This is another perennial plant called meadow sweet or queen of the prairie. It can grow from 4 to 8 feet tall and blooms with fluffy pink flowers in the summer. Here's another vol victim, a two-year-old bloomerang lilac. When I saw how badly damaged this shrub was, I thought it would never survive. I'm so glad that it did survive and to see these new growths. I can't remember the name of this bush, but it's one of my favorites. In the summer, its reddish purple leaves make it look like it's glowing in the sunlight. This mondicetum was given to me by one of my sisters. These are white yarrows. I'll dig some of them later to make room for new plants. This is my one and only butterfly bush, also called Badlea, which I just finished pruning earlier. It's supposed to grow in Zone 5, but it's been thriving in Zone 3 for over 8 years now. This is one of the quick fire hydrangeas I have, which bloom from midsummer to late fall. The flowers start out pure white, then turn pink. They grow really bushy fast, which is why I prune them well, to give some space and light to smaller plants. Here's the other quick fire hydrangea. I started this goji berry from seed three years ago. There were five of them, but only two survived. There's no new growth yet, but new leaves should start coming out soon. And there's the other goji berry survivor. I covered introducing most of my plants from this side of the yard. We'll start in the vegetable garden in part 2 of this video. So please stay tuned for part 2. It is currently raining, which is what the garden needs right now. I hope you enjoyed this spring introduction to some of my plants. The next time I do another garden tour, all the plants should have plenty of leaves by then. Some of them might be flowering or already finished flowering. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and feel free to share this video with your friends. Your comments would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to click the notification bell to stay updated for new videos. Again, thank you and see you next time. Happy gardening!